Hello everyone, it's Slav here and I'm very proud to tell you about the today's deck which I brought myself and not only it works, but it works way, way better than I thought it would. We are actually top 213 mythic with this deck. Top 213. And we prob probably could go way higher because our win rate is 83%. Out of six matches, we won only one. Uh, we lost only one of them. And that actually, I think, was Mana Screw or Mana Flute or something like this. So it's, the deck is insane. It's actually so good. And not only it has very good cards and so on as usually, but it also includes everything. The Covetous. A really, really interesting card that I really wanted to try out and I have never seen it used in like popular streams and so and so on. So I'm really happy that uh, the card is tested and I really like the outcome. So I think it has potential. So uh, that's what you can expect. Uh, and by the way, on the play we won all of the games, which tells quite a lot. So uh, let's go into the deck list and see what's up. Hi guys, just uh, three words from Sloth at the introduction, because I actually was forced to do a voiceover for the all games. Every single match I recorded was on the muted mic. And I realized it after <laughs> trying to ma match everything together and editing. So I just went through all the games and revoiced them. <laughs> so I'm sorry if you don't like voiceovers, I did my best and I hope you still enjoy them because the games were pretty cool and the deck is amazingly cool. So I, I hope you still enjoy those. And I've spent so much time revoicing everything. So if you like the effect, uh, I really could use a subscription and nice comment. And uh, if you didn't like it, also comment, I want to know. So thank you and let's go into the deck. Okay guys, so we are in the deck list and thank you for anyone that tuned up into the deck introduction because I really wanted to talk about this deck and I'm so proud of it. Uh, it works really nicely and the synergies are way more common than you would expect. So let's start with the whole deck list. We have a lot of cheap removal. That's one of the good parts about the deck. You really have good early game with all the removals. Like we have two blood chip first two marches and two black marches. Why the black marches? Why not more blood chief first? Because at some point uh, I noticed that gaining this all this life, especially if you have a lot of cards like double Kaito and double Rafin or something like this or whatever you just don't need at the moment, uh, the extra life gain that you get from this card really makes you like invulnerable unless enemy seizes control over the game. So that's where you can, you know, stabilize fully and get benefit of the rest of the deck to outvalue the enemy. So I really like it and I felt one is just too little. March, really good against Menlands, but we just used the other March. What more? Uh, from the new cards, because that's what you are the most interested, right? Avon Heartstabber, the real star of this deck. The card seems so little, but when you start playing it, it actually changes the whole game plan for you. So basically you have this two mana flyer that has one one and draws cards basically when it dies. But not only it can go grow, and it's actually, when you look at the costs for the deck, we have six five drops, and a lot of four drops, a lot of three drops, like we have really potential to fill this five different cost criteria, which is not always the case. But also it benefits from Raffin, and this is huge because you can activate it on turn three already. It means that, for example, if you don't have enough lands in your hand and you cannot play a fourth land, which is very important for this deck, you can cycle one of the cards, which can be huge. The fact that this can grow based on Rafin attacks is also really good because 1-1 one, one is not the most threatening, but 2-2, two, two, it can trade, for example, with Fable token. Uh, or even with Kiki Jiki, but let's be honest, it never attacks. But basically, you actually have a creature on the board that does something and needs to be removed, and then you get the card back. So it's like pre-activation without having different mana costs, thanks to Rafin. Not only this, it has an amazing synergy with Kaito, because you, of course, you can make this ninja token, but the fact that you can already draw a card, it helps you curve out so much better when you can 
make sure that you always cast the land, you always play something to full mana, and you always have this 4-drop that you want. And sometimes you just need a sweeper or something. So the fact that you can play Aven, nobody really wants to kill it, because then you get draw, to draw a card, right? So nobody wants to kill it. And then you attack, everyone is <laughs> 1 damage. Bro, and then you play Kaito, and suddenly he's in horrible spot. And against red decks, it has four loyalty, and then five next turn. So when he can answer it after it phases in, like the toughness is incredible. So it's really hard to kill, and this engine can last for the full game. And Rafin, man, this card is so strong, and not only because it's hard to remove very good defensive creature, but the fact that you can cycle your top decks is such a big star over the long game. You, you will see in one of the games, this card carried better than like Planewalkers. So yeah, really, 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 really. The Populate, uh, quite good card because we have not only Avenheart Stabber that is multicolored and also Raffin, also the token from Kaito. Uh, we also have Evelyn in the worst case, so we have quite a lot of ways to benefit from the draw one. And in best case, uh, enemy doesn't have it, uh, like multicolored creature, and that's usually the case, because like uh, when you want to sweep, it's usually against some kind of mono white or stuff, so, or you know, a lot of black creatures, and you decide when you play it. So if it doesn't benefit you, maybe destroy the creature in a different way, and then depopulate. So it's actually a good card, maybe you should run more than this. Emperor, come on. Uh, Sorin, one Sorin, because we don't want to overdo it, but it really enhances all the other plane walkers and you want to think how you exactly defend it, because you generally don't want to lose it unless you are completely forced. But when it goes to 5 loyalty and you draw the card, it's not easy to kill and you usually want to play it when the board is empty. So dealing 5 damage directly to Planewalker is something most that can do. And for this reason we also have Negate. And man, Negate! I, I love this card so much, it feels so much better when you have it in hand. Uh, so, for example, you can protect all your plane walkers, and most importantly, e we have Invoke Despair because, in part, we are Invoke Despair deck. Basically, when you have the seven mana, you can ensure that you will cast the spare, and it usually wins you the game or just puts you super ahead. And yeah, uh, like obviously, Negate is great, but it, in this deck, it really feels nice because you usually aren't pressured so much by creatures because you have those hair suburbs, you have Raffin, you have Wandering Emperor that also works amazingly when you have a creature on the board. You can, for example, put it with First Strike, and then you have four loyalty, and then you can exile and exile even. And you can make sure that you protect the plane walkers. So the deck plays itself really nicely, better than you could expect together. And now the big star of the deck, because we pretty much uh, have two Invoke Despairs and two Evelyn. For anyone that didn't see this card, because uh, it's rare, it's five mana hybrid cost, so you can pay either blue or black, the second one is always black and then uh, black or red. We don't run any red lands, so it's pretty much three black or two black and a blue. And uh, for five mana you get a flesh creature with two attack, five defense. And whenever it comes into battlefield, you and the enemy both exile a card from your top of your libraries. And basically you can play them. It's like a T-Bard uh, uh, plus two, but, uh, I think. So. Basically, you play this, you have a 2-5 blocker that is really strong and really hard to kill, and also you draw two cards from two different decks. And you just need to remember, you cannot play them both at the same turn, but it's, to be honest, it's not a problem generally. So the card is really good and really helps with the whole plane walker uh, plan. So that's the deck, and the Invoke the Spore and Evelyn is your basically value play. Uh, we have Memory de Rouge, but we count more on those cards for like late game. And Memory de Rouge is just nice addition to fill mid game. And yeah, with the Kaito and Corn Dracula, or Sorin, I should say, you try to dig into those cards and they usually will win you the game. And the fact that you have 2 5 blocker helps so much in so many games. And not only this, if enemy is sure that you cannot kill him, for example, with this Herstabber or Raffin, because he counted the damage and he can, you cannot kill him. When you play this, you can attack with this. It's additional 2 damage and also additional connive 
on the flyer, for example. So in reality, it can be a flash three additional damage. In some situations, this will be will win you the game. You can even mid hook massacre. So actually, the burst is here. So uh, that's the deck, and yeah, uh, let's go into the games. And as always, if you like uh, this kind of decks, subscribe. So uh, thank you, and let's go into the games. Okay, so for this hand, we are really good in mana. Uh, we can cast Vanishing Verse on two, turn two, and also Rafin. Rafin is like a, such a good card when you can play him on the curve. He will either cycle uh, you into the lands, or you can pretty much cycle you know lands into value so whatever you get you get more balanced gameplay and in this game i was extremely scared <laughs> because this is the only swamp from the deck <laughs> and as you can see i'm really scared about field of ruin because if enemy notices and starts killing my lands it's pretty much to mana destroy land so that's incredibly problematic and one of the reasons that field of ruin might be really played right now because it's pretty much a free land destroy so we are playing Rafin right now, it really helps, of course we don't really have much of a play except Rafin, we could only cycle the tower or keep vanishing verse, but you really want to get Rafin into the game. So okay, they had March, but we still get the ward cost from them and they had to waste it, it's like a good card, not, not much you can do about it. So what exactly is enemy doing? Uh, well, at this rate we just try to play for the longer game. So basically we are keeping uh, Vanishing Verse up uh, versus whatever he really plays. And our value plays will be Despair and First ever most likely. And at this point we have so many lands that I just decided to cycle. Like this is one of the reasons you might not play uh, the Triumphs so quickly. And yeah. I think for this situation, probably Evelyn is just a bit better. But, well, bo both work, because uh, Invoke Despair pretty much gives you so much value right now. And without blue, enemy isn't like really uh, able to counter it, right? So it's much, much different against control decks. So here we had options to do both. I generally prefer creature, because not only you draw, you also get to, you know, draw enemy cards and if you are playing against control that's really good <laughs> so uh Evelyn, the covetous yep we got the clue the only problem with uh Evelyn is the fact that moment she dies because i actually didn't know about this so that was an oopsie uh when she dies you don't get the counters uh, the cards so that's the only problem you want to generally protect her but let me tell you in generally when you play with her she nearly never dies against control it's a bit different but normally five toughness is quite a lot so still uh, we have kaito right now which is a very good drawing country and we still have vanishing verse right but for this turn i decided that we go for the emperor because we have two mana open for the crew and I wanted to make sure I get this card and Emperor at the end step like the fact that enemy is not playing blue mana is so helpful because you don't need to think about counter spells it means every flash uh, will get into the battlefield and you can start creating tokens pressuring like you will never kill control like this generally but the fact that you force them to react main phase is pretty huge and we still get the card for Evelyn, right? So that's really good overall. It's actually a card advantage one, one way or the other. And I started with the minus one. So in case we go into combat phase, they cannot kill Emperor and like get free value. And generally two Samurai is more damage than one with the, to uh, with the counter. And yeah, with Kaito you really want to have something on board so we can uh, start drawing. Like Farewell doesn't hit Planewalkers unless they have Devastating Mastery. Like they have troubles dealing with Planewalkers and creatures. Especially that creatures are pretty much not so threatening. So yeah, the only problem is drawing cards. So whatever creature you create, it's the same. And now the enemy will know. <laughs> Oh, but I was so happy that he didn't know about it since the start of the game. 
uh, especially this kind of mono white because I've seen this deck already. I think runs something like three field of ruins. Like they are mono white, they can get creative with the lands, right? So yeah, I was really happy that he didn't nuke my lands at the early game. <laughs> that would be horrible. So I decided not to cast the rush because uh, I wanted to keep vanishing verse. Our situation in the board is so favorable. Look at the enemy. He's one probably I don't know what what is it. I I would guess it's a doomscar, right? And three cards in hand. And look at our hand. It's just pure gas. And when we start passing Emperor, it means that after sweep we can create more creatures, we can draw more cards. At this point, it's really hard for the enemy to come back. Like he has the calling barons, I guess. And that's one of the problems that you cannot exactly kill the barons, right? With the vanishing bear. So we need the Emperor. For this reason, I didn't play the Emperor. And here, uh, enemy is at 13. So casting me to, like, when you think it's a Doomscar, the mid hook is actually really good because you can start creating tokens and every single token for the full game will uh, always cost him one life to remove. So in a way you can think he has three, 13 removals for this game available. <laughs> so yeah, portable hall. So probably for the mid hook, right? But it's still pretty good. Like, enemy has two cards in the hand, and we are in a control against control matchup pretty much. Like, for some time I wasn't sure if the Fortort card maybe is uh, like the Angels. Because theoretically he can have this Angels, and it's like one white and XX. But yeah, it's a Doomscar. So, so b b basically he can create a lot of Angels, like. Three angels or six, something like this, whatever. So that's why I was a bit scared about this, and I was really happy when it was a Doomscar. Okay, and after the Rouge, what we have? Sorin. And Horror of the Storm Giants is really good here, because, like, in a way, uh, you get additional damage, like, really quickly. Enemy is at 13, and we have two Planewalkers and Horror of the Storm Giants. You can pressure enemy really nicely with this. Yeah, like, the only problem would be Devastating Mastery, but most white decks don't play it, and I the deck list I've seen for this deck I didn't play, uh, like, Devastating master. And other than this, you can create so many tokens every time. Like, look at this stuff. <laughs> uh, if you put the plus one counter, the vampire can block the cave, so that was the reasoning here. And Ninja against Crawling Barons, so he cannot remove Planewalkers easily. Like, we can still use the Emperor, but here we just tapped out, and we only have Vanishing Verse. So, as long as he goes card for card for tokens, we are bound to outvalue him. Especially with, like, Invoke Despair and Memory Verse. So, yeah. And also, we can use Vanishing Verse at the any moment to get Midhook Massacre back. So, yeah. That, that is the only problem, that he can attack with Barons and remove one of the Planewalkers. So he can choose what he hates the most. And... Well, what does he hate? Kaito. Surprisingly, the cheapest Planewalker, which... <laughs> it actually te tells a lot that out of all the four drops, he took a three drop. <laughs> okay, land is really good here. So basically, enemy is at 40, 13. And every time you see enemy at this kind of light, you really want to hit him once. Because then for the full rest of the game, he needs to always defend against the horde. If he taps out for a moment even, you just go and kill him. And especially with the, like the samurai. So basically you always hit him and also you can hit him extremely hard every time he doesn't prepare. So that's really good and that's that's a nice way to generally finish the game. We also have the spare, but he got enchantment, so never mind, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but basically even invo invoke the spare would kill him. So right, right now when you see enemy has no cards in the hand, that's really easy. Even if he activates one of the stuff, you can just go for it. And basically here he can activate the cave. So he can save the barons, and barons are always better, right? Long term. 
but we have vanishing verse so if he activates the cave we can just kill it before the block declarations so let's attack with everything oh and he went for the greedy version so i, I went to full control vanishing verse this way he cannot declare blocks and it means that hall kills him this turn right so if he used the barons we couldn't do it yeah so he would survive one turn earlier but he was super greedy and we went top 213 mythic with this deck that's pretty insane okay so here we have pretty strong hand because we have quite a lot of removal and emperor at the four mana play so we want to start with Rafin Tower. I, I had some doubts because we have like four lands in the opening hand. So if we get flooded, we probably want to cycle. Well, we, we get another tower, right? So <laughs> in the end, I guess it's fine. But yeah, that, that's something you need to consider. And right now we are against some aggressive deck, obviously. So I want to keep some kind of removal. But we have not enough value to like exile for the march so Blacky first good enough and vanishing versus a really good draw here because most of their draws probably will be at least the threatening ones will probably be targets for vanishing verse well this pup isn't so scary because it puts counters only when he has another wolf so as long as you remove the other stuff it's fine overall and with Emperor you can even sometimes make a token and either trade or get it for free. Rafin here is a really good draw. Like Rafin is a card that you generally want with this deck in the in the board. Like it, it might not seem to, like much, but it absorbs so much damage and it can connive, it can attack, it can kill plane walkers. It is a good target for the Emperor. So basically in a, in a way, like as long as you have Rafin, you have way more options than when you don't have it. Okay, so for now, enemy has some kind of snow deck, so he can have uh, frostbite. But he cannot pay for ward, yeah? So that's why I'm showing those runs so much, because if he even have double frostbite, like, uh, he cannot pay for all the wards. So, if he cannot kill Rafin, that's a problem for him. So, uh, we don't attack. Generally, you don't really want to attack unless you want to connive. So, that, that's the point. And enemy cannot attack with the pack leader unless he buffs it. And attacking with the other pup is not good because it won't be big enough to threaten us. And if he does everything, we can just Wandering Emperor. Okay, and that's a big removal. So he needs to pay the ward. It means he only has one mana. So, you can already see the play, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm super happy about it. I'm so excited, you wouldn't believe. So basically, enemy has one mana, so he might have something that deals one damage, but he cannot pay for ward. So we are guaranteed to save Rafin thanks to the ward. Like, this one ward really changes things. So right now it will be 2-5 with 4 damage on it. The unfortunate part is that if enemy attacks with both creatures, it's 4 damage. So it's enough to kill the Emperor, so that's a big problem. But it's still worth to save Rafin. So, we have a wounded demon, Sphinx. And the enemy is thinking hard, <laughs> because nobody wants Emperor on the enemy side, right? I definitely wouldn't in his spot. But yeah, even if he, you save Rafin, that's, that's painful, when, when you cannot block this turn. Okay, so basically, there is a chance to save the Emperor, but then you need to exile a lot of stuff. Basically, everything you have. So, in order to save Emperor, we decided to really sacrifice a lot. And one of the big reasons is that we can either minus two and get rid of the pack leader, or just keep buffing Rafin, or even make a samurai. Every option really helps in the game. Especially, like, the, the pack leader, you can see that it's not so scary. Like, if you don't have a lot of 4-drops, it just doesn't do anything. 
Like, yeah, it does some damage, but not good enough. Okay, play with fire. So, so he got the Emperor. It's really nice for the enemy to do it before the blockers. Like, if he was better, I would even think that he tried to bait us into blocking because he wanted to kill Rafi. And this is like the situation when you needed to decide, do you want the Emperor or Rafi? You could save only one of them. And I decided that Rafin is just more important because basically we can cycle all the cards and enemy has three cards, it's not so much and we need good top decks and with Rafin you make sure that you have the good top decks. Cementary Prowler, three mana that discounts creatures. So here I actually made a mistake because I should kill uh, the wolf right now. Because if you don't kill it at the start, he gets the discount on every creature. So for example, he can cast right now this 3-drop, the werewolf thing with haste, because it costs one less, because he exiled the creature. But Anem is so kind, again, <laughs> that he went into combat. So yeah, uh, right now I, I really should remove it, so enemy cannot make another play this turn. Because so far, let, let's look at the like facts. We are at 20 HP, we have a lot of lands, and we have Rafin in the game. So that's why I exiled right now. And we can start cycling, we don't really need lands right now. We need, we need answers. Oh man, <laughs> oh man, that's an insane top deck. And tell me, would Emperor do this? Nope, we would just keep drawing lands, and we would lose probably the game. So, uh, at this point, uh, I decided that it's worth to further Doomscar because that's card we won't be conniving at all. So, we just keep it. And at some point, Rafin won't be as important, so he can go. But so far, like, we are cycling this stuff. And Kaito is at 4 loyalty because he didn't have to do the ninja thing. So that really is helpful, especially when you play against Frostbite deck uh, or something like this, or play with fire, whatever. And not only Rafin cycles one card, it lets you draw another with Kaito, so man, uh, that synergy really uh, helps with this game. And we can even cycle the Rafin Tower, so I want to discard the... Well, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's a good draw. It it's really seems we are mostly drawing lands right now, which is not exactly the point. Imagine if we had Emperor instead of Rafin. This game wouldn't look nice right now. And slowly but surely, Thanks. enemy has two cards, we have already three. And we can cycle it, so I'm cycling main phase, because there's chance that we might draw something. <laughs> <laughs> Just seeing the, all those lands is so frustrating right now. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm really... <laughs> I'm totally not salty. I'm not totally not salty uh, while I was gaming this one. <laughs> like, I'm just uh, randomly looking at the graveyard, totally not uh, complaining about drawing four lands or five lands in a row, because that's not the type of person I am. So, uh, like... Even uh, Hearthstabber is such a good draw here, because it really helps with the connive, it really helps with attacking with Rafin, and it al also like draws us at the card when he finally kills it somehow, so that's a really good draw, and slowly we are going into this value part of the deck, like we have uh, Evelyn, we have the spares, if we draw any of those... <laughs> If we draw any of those cards, that's really good. And yeah, with this deck you really want to care what you discard, so we can activate the Heartstabbers. That's something I'm not great yet uh, in, and I, uh, I I will admit, I often turn it on by mistake, because I just discard random cards, and at some point I discard five of them with different costs. But definitely something you need to care about while playing this deck. Yeah, like especially with the knife, it's it's part of your game plan. So I played the deck because I thought that we have enough value, hopefully. And with Avon, like they can kill it, but it gets you know value back, so it doesn't really matter. And you can see Memory Rouge a combo, and uh, we finally got Evelyn. 
man, like when when you see Evelyn in such situation, it's like uh, three cards in one. <laughs> like, they, like I really like playing Evelyn. So basically, we sacrifice Kaito because we have another one, and another one will will get faced. Also, and then he cannot really threaten us in any way. Like right now, what he will do two damage. We we don't really care at fourteen. And when you have Pain Walker, you actually care a bit. So. That's something to keep in mind, and we are going for Rafin because it's a big flyer, and like we are just going for the kill slowly. NM is at 12, and we are at 14, and we have a flash blocker, so we actually can raise the enemy right now, and we can cast both Evelyn and even Assassin Killer, which is pretty amazing. So we can see this deck really can pull a lot of damage if you if you really want. And enemy is dead on board pretty much. So yeah, that was pretty nice game and we slowly grinded enemy out of value pretty much. Like he had advantage at some point, but we just grinded him and he has no value. Okay, so uh, very interesting hand as you can see. But to be perfectly honest, this type of hand is really good and I'm extremely excited about those sleeves and I want them since like half a year or longer and I cannot get them. Like look at this animation, they are, they are one of the best sleeves and I, I dream about them. So basically we have three Avon Heart Stabbers and that's really good because in the end it's 3-3 three, three in flying stats and enemy is playing some kind of creature deck I guess. So. You generally want to start with the birds, like you don't want to be reactive, you want to float the game with your birds because they pressure enemy, like 3-3 three, three, that can become a 9-9 nine, nine to, together is no joke. So basically you want to go for the Mirma for the first turn and for the second turn obviously. And yeah, you probably won't die because you have so many blockers and when blockers are gone you have new cards and you can make new stuff. So right now we have Esper Mana and we play more burps because burps are how you win the games. Like seriously, when you have every game those Avon Heart Stubbers, it makes games so much better, so much easier. Okay, so enemy has pretty threatening stuff and I like we have to remove it. I was thinking, is there a way that if he plays another enchantment, we can kill this in response after he pays the mana? But it copies the targets on the stack, so it means you cannot really do anything about it. So we need to remove it main phase before he untaps. So that's the problem. Unfortunately, against enchantments, the birds are not as good because like, they are chump blockers pretty much that gain you stuff. But, oh, actually, like, <laughs> with this situation, Rafin was, like, perfect on deck. And, okay, you can already see how the deck can work together. So I just was saying that birds are small, and suddenly with Rafin, thanks to the fact that you have two creatures in the board that can attack, playing Rafin is so much better. And we actually got the uh, land drop, which is really insane. So enemy like we we lack black mana for invoke despair unfortunately but look at this freaking damage everything was flying right so it's not like enemy can do uh, anything about it the only thing he can do uh, is pretty much uh, lifelink oh man that's such a good draw so we have enough cards so memory the rush is a bit redundant and I think I want the Evelyn right now. Yeah, yeah. Because we cannot play the spell anyway. We lack one black mana. We, like, we should early game, I guess, put more black, but I don't think we really had the occasion. Maybe this land on turn two that we went for blue pathway. Okay, so basically enemy will flood the board like crazy, but he's at two, so... It depends if he has some kind of lifelink. If he doesn't, he's dead. If he has lifelink, he needs to make a huge hit. Okay, so obviously they always have it. <laughs> How? Uh, and he needs to heal, but we act somehow we activated the Avens 
And suddenly there are 5-5 five, five flyers with death touch for 2 mana, which draw cards when they die. Pretty good for me. Um, Ishiku Reign of Truth is pretty devastating because it means a big heal. And we cannot really do anything about it, so that's not great. So right now I think I'm counting because we have 11 damage. Enemy is for, at 14. So if we cast Evelyn, yeah, so uh, so we cast Evelyn because she can uh, facilitate the connive, right? So even though she is on ground, oh, and March is okay, but probably not the card you want. So basically we can attack with everything, then we use connive, thanks to Evelyn we can connive for a one more, and it's what? 11 damage uh, plus 4 in the best case, so it depends what we draw, right? So we can buff it for two, and the plan is to cast Despair, because we can hit him for this... Uh, oh? Do we actually kill the enemy? Oh, right. So I wanted to use Despair, but actually when you count it, it's plus three, so it's exactly 14 damage, and enemy is tapped out. So I'm checking if there are any lifelinks, because they can block everything. So if he has any lifelinker, he will survive and we die. But no, uh, so it seems that was perfect, thanks to Evelyn. If we didn't have Evelyn this game, uh, enemy would be at 1 HP. I guess we then cast the spare, but you, you can see the idea clearly, and that's top 300. So that's pretty nice. Okay, so what's up? Uh, we have Dimir mana. So that's basically what you want uh, for the start, because you really want to play this Haven even heard stubber at the start so we can draw into more lands and more stuff it also really works nicely with raffin we just need to hit another land uh, unfortunate part is that we also have quite a lot of white cards <laughs> and we, we we don't really get them if we play for the heart stubber so we, we we hope that at some point we will draw into another planes but if we go white, we cannot really do anything and we still cannot cast Doomscar. And uh, yeah, th that's how you play well. You just top deck what you need, so you don't need to think about it. And you can clearly see like how much better Aven is uh, when you have Rafin in the deck and you, you play on curve. Like having already three attackers, like three attack every turn that can go into five and seven. Like, man, this is threatening and it's so hard to remove for most of the decks. So basically we can go for double white, this way we can go for Emperor or whatever, or Doomscar, if we ever want. And I, I, I think pretty much we can just keep attacking every turn. Like, enemy is forced to do something. So basically they have three black, if they have like Infernal Grasp or something they can get rid of Rafin. Anem is one of them, <laughs> so basically he wants to kill Rafin, so usually you want to buff Avon to make it awkward, but at the same time uh, you want to pay, force him to pay additional ward or he cannot remove the stuff. And at this point I decided that March is not as good, because we want to buff Rafin a bit. We want our land drops, and next turn it's Invoke Despair, so we get the value back. And I actually didn't notice that we don't have uh, 4 black, but we can cast Evelyn. Evelyn is actually pretty good play. Uh, every time you just lack what, this one black mana for Invoke Despair. And we can keep buffing uh, Rafin. Oh man, like this is such a high cho ha hard choice. What to discard? Like... Avon is amazing, but it's probably not the most important card. Emperor is also amazing here, but the counters are more important. And also Vanishing Verse and 5 drops are just better in this part of the game. So, to be honest, I again uh, turned on Avon Heartstabber by mistake, but I'm happy about it. <laughs> so, Soul Shatter is fine. Like, there is a point to maybe use Evelyn as a bait, but then you don't get cards, I believe, so... Evelyn is so good here, and it's actually a lethal. So if enemy doesn't have anything prepared, 
<laughs> and they explode. Man, this game was fully sponsored by Birds, Raffin and Evelyn, like an aggro deck. That's, that was pretty sweet. Okay, so what is this hand? I haven't heard Stubber. Man, this is quickly becoming my favorite card, to be honest. Like, when, when you have Ivan Health Stubber, the game is usually just somehow easier. Uh, the only part we need in this draw is Kaito. And Enemy is playing some kind of curtain deck. No idea what is it, to be honest, right now. <laughs> But it's good that we have Hearth Stubber. And you can see, like, they, they put their 2 mana play, and it's 3-1, that trades perfectly with your Hearth Stubber. So they basically gain nothing, and you still get to draw a card. Like, this is really good. It trades with so many things. So right now I'm a bit scared, because our cards in the hand are, like, the highest value from our deck. Like, the 5 drops in Sorin, and we, also, we only have one Sorin, right? So I decided that we kill the curtain just to prevent the stuff going on. And like theoretically we could kill the shade, but why would we do it if we can just make sure that we tried? I'm actually quite surprised that the enemy wanted to do this attack. Make sure they get it back, but they don't get back the mana. And yeah. Well, maybe they... I don't know, I don't I don't like this, this play from the enemy. Graver Trespasser though, extremely annoying. Like, we are in a way a Graveyard deck a bit, uh, due to the events, so we don't want our deck to be exiled. So right now I decided that we, we need to play Sorin, right? And in order to... Oh man, but that's so hard. Because you need to not only exile one card, pay all the mana, you also need to pay the ward cost. So if we do it, I, I think I'm not doing it in the end. Because like we lose all the value, we basically have one card in the hand after this play. Uh, what more, if we can go into Invoke Despair, uh, that, oh wow, that, that, that's a good draw. If we go into the Invoke Despair, we don't need to pay the ward, which is huge. The problem is that generally Trespasser won't be a thing. So in the end, I'm thinking about going uh, for the minus two. So the Trespasser cannot really go through unless he puts the removal. So he does, but it's still his main turn, right? And hopefully, like if we draw a land right now, we can go Invoke Despair and pretty much kill everything for free and win the game, I think. Like, it's not spoiler, but at this point, when you kill this creature, it's so good. Oh man, that, that, like, this is really problematic. We also, this is actually our first white mana of the game, Can if you ever believe it. <laughs> yeah, so I would definitely Doomscar and that would be amazing. But life can't be so easy, right? So right now, if we invoke Despair, then the enemy sacrifices not the card that we want him to sacrifice. So Evelyn is overall a bit better. We could cast her main phase in order to not trigger day and night time. But it's, it's hard. Like, it's a hard situation. In the end, I decided for Despair, uh, mostly to draw cards. And because, like, enemy... Oh, except attacking and exiling graveyard, it's just 3 damage, maybe 4. So it's not the worst, and even Heartstabber still trade reasonably well, card for card. So, you know, it's not the worst. And now I'm reading this card because I have no idea what it does. So basically, whenever a creature dies, you get a crew, so they investigate stuff, but it triggers once a turn. So, in the end, it trades really well on the value, but not as good as our cards. And man, like, this Trespasser is such a pain overall. Okay, so right now I decided for the Evelyn, uh, because then we can dig into the lands. I really needed second white in order to sweep the board. And without the second white, like, our deck doesn't work as we want it to. Oh wow, and the enemy is seemingly playing into us. 
Oh man, the, the, this turn is really helpful for us. And you can see, he didn't play them before. Uh, he's played it because of the Evelyn, because it's so much pressure and it also makes sure that Trespasser cannot do anything because we have such a big blocker. And not only this, we also get the value from from the cards that we can play. So, like really, Evelyn is doing work in this game. And, yeah, it, it's really good when you can force enemy to commit more to the board. So we have, what, 7 mana, right? So we can Doomscar and also keep something. So I'm attacking right now because I want to sweep the board. Enemy is doing stuff as, as he should. So no difference. Uh, it was just attempt to get two more damage for free. Uh, he got the clue, but he will always get the clue when you sweep. And basically, that's the situation when you want the most. So we have Aven. Uh, enemy has only four mana, so I'm not super scared about some kind of crazy negate. And we also have March and Vanishing Verse, so most of the cards that enemy could play we can remove. Yeah, so we wanted to have some board as quickly as possible. And yeah, like we can cycle and see what's up. Another Doomscare, that's pretty good. Like we can foretell and pretty much, like when you have Vanishing Verse and Negate with correct mana, it feels so powerful because you basically answer anything enemy can play. As you can see, Emperor, not really an issue here. Man, I like negate so much. I'm like negate uh, addict or something. So we are at 13. So we are not really scared about our life total. So basically, generally you want to wait until enemy commits more stuff. And here I think ninja is better. Yeah, because in the end we are two cards against three cards and enemy has crew, so we need to start grinding some value, I guess. And yeah, shade. This is the point when shade is a problem. Okay, and enemy played Shadrik Silver Quill. So basically at the combat phase you get to choose two of those options. It's like drawing cards and losing life, creating a token and putting plus one, plus one. But uh, when you choose one, enemy gets another one and you can choose who gets what. So it's pretty crazy card. <laughs> I played it in draft and it was amazing, but uh, in this kind of play, it's a bit weird. So basically, we are happy. Uh, when you sweep in this situation, you always attack with ninja first. And yeah, you want to draw this sweet, sweet card. Like the fact that Ninja translates to free cards is so amazing. And then you reset everything. And with this deck, that's the situation you want generally. Uh, enemy has nothing. You have the token and you have Vanishing Verse and Negate. So whatever enemy does, as long as it's like threatening, you just get rid of it. So that's really good. And the problem for the enemy also is mana. He only has five. He had a lot of plays, but not really a lot of tempo. So right now it's very hard for him to come back. We have seven lands. So we can pretty much kill the Rafin, uh, even with the ward cost. But having our Rafin is good enough. Especially like he cannot kill the, the token. And if we really want, we could buff it, but in reality, there is no need because it won't die to Rafin, so we can just cycle lands without paying 3 mana. So it's ba it, this basically saved us 3 mana, just thanks to Rafin, and we can still draw cards. Okay, and uh, to be honest, it invoked the spur. It's really close to over, I think. Like, not from spoiler, because I don't remember, but like in this situation, enemy doesn't have much to do. Especially that we have negate, so when we have the spare and negate, we feel really good. Like I, I'm always a bit hesitant about casting the spare into open blue mana. Like it can go really wrong. <laughs> okay, so here this is a ganja, but enemy is tapped out pretty much. We have what four mana. Like to be honest, it's not a big problem. I think we can what. Like, we could exile a few cards, but it's not worth it. 
to kill the Raffin. Hearth Saber. Hearth Saber is good, a bit late. But it is a scary card, but fortunately we have the Exile effect. Obviously we cannot Vanish Inverse because it's uh, multicolor. So March is really good, because, especially because it's low mana cost and high stats. So you just want to keep drawing cards with, uh, with Kaito, right? It's such a good value engine. And when you can cast Invoke Despair in such situation, when enemy has one creature, it's pretty much over. So is the enemy? Yeah. He had enough. Like this is, this is how you close the game. When he plays one creature and you can cast Despair, so you get rid of this creature and make sure you draw more cards for the future, that's, that's it usually.